Let's talk about aluminum and its uh, a whole plethora of stuff that you need to know about aluminum. Well, aluminum to begin with is the most common metal in the Earth's crust. And because aluminum is reactive, you're going to find aluminum in its ores. And back in the old days, before we discovered the electrolytic process, aluminum was extracted by having aluminum chloride reacting with sodium metal to get sodium chloride and aluminum. This was a very old, expensive method of extracting aluminum. And it is true, back in the old days, Aluminum was more expensive than gold. Whew. Then two in persons independently discovered the electrolytic reactions of extracting aluminum by electrolysis. And they have been both given the credit. So it's whole heroic process. And that's basically your big old industrial scale electrolysis of extracting aluminum from alumina mixed with creolite. We know all about that now. Another interesting reaction of aluminum is the thermite reaction. This is a very highly, highly exothermic redox reaction and it gives out a lot of energy. And what, how you do it is that you have, uh, this is a lab scale setup where you have the sand and the um, container here to kind of insulate the heat, all right? You have the dry mixture in this clay crucible right here. And the dry mixture consists of um, iron oxide and aluminum. Iron 3 oxide and aluminum powder. All right? They're all smashed up into little bits of powder and uh, to, to expedite the reaction. All right. And then you have a magnesium ribbon, kind of like the ignition source of the reaction. Light it up and buzz lots of lots of heat and the chemical equation for that is that the aluminum 3 oxide is going to react with aluminum to get aluminum oxide Ooh, alumina and molten iron and this molten iron is can be poured to the whole plethora of things for example you can use it to um, uh, build railroads and that's what they did back in the old days in the breaking breaking bad series the uh, Walter White and Jesse Pinkman used thermite to boom blow up the uh, door of the the uh, warehouse that we're trying to break into. Okay, uses of aluminum alloys. Well, aluminum is light, it's strong when it's an alloy, and is a good conductor of elect electricity and heat. Right, electricity and heat. Aluminum can also be used to, as an electrical cable with a steel core. Here you have this high wire electrical cables. You have an insulation on the outside, and then this little dots in here, this little dots in there, that's your aluminum wiring. And then your steel core right in the middle. The steel core is to prevent extreme sagging of the high wire cable. Aluminum alloys are also used in aircrafts. In sports cars, in sports cars engines, as food containers. Why? Because of the corrosive nature of aluminum. So when you have aluminum, it quickly tarnishes and forms an oxide layer. That oxide layer does not flake off like iron and steel. So what you get is a nice coating of aluminum oxide around the material, the aluminum material that you have. And this oxide layer becomes like a protective layer, all right? So that's pretty cool. Now, for your cation test and your analytical test, you can detect aluminum because of its special properties. Now, first of all, there's no real colors in the flame test. Why? It's because of the way the electrons are arranged in the orbitals. So we're not going to go into that. However, aluminum salts does dissolve in water. So when it dissolves in water, we can add sodium hydroxide. A little bit of sodium hydroxide, when we add them, it forms a white precipitate. What exactly is going on in the reaction, yo? Here we go. So let's, for example, have an aluminum chloride as an example. All right, this dissolves in water. You have sodium hydroxide. All right, when you have sodium hydroxide, that added to that, you form 
aluminum hydroxide, which is insoluble, and it's quite precipitate, and you get sodium chloride as your byproduct. However, aluminum hydroxide is an amphoteric oxide. <gasps> amphoteric, that means here, it can act as an acid, even though this is a base. So when you add excess amounts of sodium hydroxide, aluminum suddenly now can behave like an acid. And you have an acid, aluminum hydroxide, reacting with a base uh, or alkaline so uh, sodium hydroxide, and you form a salt. Acid-base reaction forms a salt. What's the salt? The salt is aluminum, uh, I mean, the salt is sodium aluminate, NaAlO2. And that is aqueous because all group 1 metals or salts, all group 1 salts are soluble. Oh, and you get water. That's amazing. That's why when you do the analytical test of aluminum, it first precipitates at excess amounts of the uh, sodium hydroxide, then it becomes re-dissolves re because of the product as formed. Well. And that's the same for zinc. How interesting is that?